Let's make the transition from walking to running. Chapter 12, Muscle Driven Running. And in fact, if you've made it this far, congratulations. You know a lot about biomechanics. Either that or you skipped everything, and here we are in, in chapter 12. One of the most important features of human running that enables us to move efficiently over long distances is our bouncing gait. In running, the body's center of mass slows and lowers during the first half of stance, storing elastic energy. That elastic energy is then liberated from tissues as we fly into the flight phase. And amazingly, this takes place each step during the two to 300 milliseconds when the foot is contact, uh, in contact with the ground. I love this quote from Jesse Owens. I let my feet spend as little time as possible on the ground. Jesse Owens is a real hero. He became an international superstar in 1936 during the Summer Olympics in Berlin. He won four gold medals, 100 meter long jump, 200 meter, and the four by 100 meter relay. He was the most successful athlete in the games. And as a black American man, he is credited with single-handedly crushing Hitler's myth of Aryan supremacy. Not only did Jesse Owens crush Hitler, who watched him win all these races from the stands, but he also had great insight into biomechanics. Keep your feet on the ground as little as possible. Now, the spring-like behavior of muscles motivated researchers to develop models of running in which all the lower limb muscles were represented as a single spring like we looked at before. And these simple spring mass models provided valuable insight into the dynamics of running. It enabled researchers to increase running speed in a track like we saw in the tuned track example. They provide a really nice theoretical framework, but they're not intended to describe the actions of individual muscles. But we really do need to understand what muscles are doing and how the architecture of muscles and the compliance of tendon affect running performance. We need that to understand how to design training programs that improve running efficiency and technologies that might help us perform better. Muscle-driven simulations of running provide this deeper view of running dynamics. They complement the spring mass models that we've discussed earlier by providing a systematic methodology for estimating muscle forces and their contributions to the ground reaction force. And in this set of lectures in chapter 12, we examine muscle contributions to ground reaction force and thus to the critical tasks of providing body weight support and propelling the mass center forward. So our plan for chapter 12 in muscle-driven running is to first talk very briefly about creating a muscle-driven simulation of running. Then we'll talk about muscle actions during a steady state run at about four meters per second. We'll talk about the transition from walking to running and see the surprising result that as we walk faster and then transition to a run, it actually slows our muscle fibers. We'll look at the effects of running speed on muscle actions, and we'll also look at the transition from running to very high speed running or sprinting. So that's the plan as we move forward.